So here's a really interesting video that I actually came across. So you guys all know Stefan Molyneux. Um, remember, <laughs> most recently, he's been making his, like, continuous decline into just complete lunacy. Um, and I guess he, like, he was crying at a, a white pride march in Poland or something like that. And he was like, you know, I'm a libertarian, but I'm also an empiricist, which is based on literal anecdote. Well, we're going to get into this video, but first I want to give a, a really big shout out to some new patrons. I would like to give a big thank you to new patrons Farouk, Cello Head, Sonia Merton, Zia Hakimi, Vic Romanujam, Austin Roberts, D. Wayne, Daniel S., who edited up his pledge, Gerard Mijares, and Andrew Williams. And I'd also like to give a thank you to recurring patrons Tao Orion, Gavin Borden, Shia Dewar, Simon Beck Thalgard, Ruben, For the Win All Day, Matthew Castro, Munir Hakim, and The Canuck Connection. If you would like to support and gain a bunch of the benefits that come with it, make sure to go to patreon.com slash the progressive voice. Anyways, back to uh, the video we're going to be looking at. So Stefan Molyneux, remember that clip of Dave Rubin where Dave Rubin was on the Ben Shapiro Sunday special and he was regretting uh, that he had Stefan on because he had this weird, uh, you know, race and IQ type of thing. And he, he regretted having him on because for him, that's sort of outside of the level of discourse. And he said that basically he was like, yeah, I'm guilty of misusing my platform to essentially platform and allow Stefan Molyneux to talk about that. And so it's super interesting because there's this dynamic where the intellectual dark web is supposed to be the dark web of ideas, right? It's not mainstream, you know what I'm saying? These people like Stefan, they're so crazy. They can't make it in. Like, Lauren Southern and Stefan are outside of the IDW, which is really crazy. So, um, apparently Joe Rogan doesn't like him either. We're going to get into that in a second here. But check out this video of Stefan talking about Joe and Dave. At any chance you'd ever go back on Joe Rogan? Thank you for everything you do. Love you, Steph. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's from Matt Waters. Thank you very much. Uh, no, I don't believe that there is any chance I would go back on uh, Joe Rogan. So for those who don't know the history, uh, I'm still grateful to have had the opportunity to talk to Joe Rogan, or uh, as he's affectionately known sometimes, Toe Rogan, I guess because of his hairdo, but then I could be Toe's death. And uh, he, um, uh, his, his interest and his graciousness and his good humor and his most enjoyable conversation was a big part of helping this show um, grow five or six years ago. So I did, uh, uh, well, I did two really enjoyable shows with Joe. One was just in a hotel room, and then the other one was down in his studio where he fed me bulletproof coffee until my eyeballs rotated. And it re really enjoyed them, liked them a lot. And then, I don't know exactly what happened, but my, my guess is something like this. So uh, he apparently is friends with Anna Kasparian, ah! <laughs> and um, uh, from from the Young, young Turks. And I did a video criticizing something Anna Kasparian did, and then I think Joe went on a show with Anna Kasparian, and then Joe invited me down, and, you know, it was kind of like an ambush. He dug up every negative thing that he could find about me, and, and uh, you know, it was one of these, like, uh, hey, you know, <laughs> right? Now, people say, okay, well, that's, that happens, that's fair, and, you know, I kind of... I'm kind of half and half about that. I don't do ambush stuff. Like, I don't invite people on with the part, with sort of with the implicit promise of a reasonable and, and positive interaction and then jump them with my list of, like, every horrible thing that I've ever heard about them. Um, if somebody, like, if I have a critique of someone, then I'll say, please come on, like, if you want to come on the show, then I will critique this and this and this. And so they can make the choice about whether they want to invest their sort of time and energy into coming on the show. And um, so he, yeah, he invited me down and I, I went down, you know, da, 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 my friend Joe, and have a nice show. And it was like, boom, you know, it was like really, really harsh. Now, okay, so we can say, well, Joe Rogan has, has um, uh, you know, he really likes to take people on with their tough issues, right? And I haven't really watched the show since. It was an unpleasant experience as a whole, mostly because it was kind of surprising. You know, like when I went on... Um, uh, 
uh, Dave Rubin, right? So Dave and I did a couple of shows, which were very nice. He was on my Christmas show, a Christmas special, nice shows. And then, you know, he invites me down and, and then it's like, boom, cult leader, boom, race and IQ, boom, you know, relationship crapper or whatever it is, right? And again, it's like, it just, you know, like there's times when I was in Australia, New Zealand, like I know they're going to be hostile interviews. And so I just go in and, and uh, you know, it's, you know what you're getting into, but you know, when you are invited on people's shows who are very friendly with you and they don't tell you ahead of time that it's going to be like a hit job. I just think that's kind of rude. Like, just give me the choice. Give me the choice about whether I want to. I may have gone down anyway, but just give me, uh, give me the choice. So that is um, not to be expected, <laughs> that imminent thing. Now, with regards to Joe, you know, does he confront a lot of people? I guess he does. I did see a debate with him and Stephen Crowder on and then it's the facts and so on. But... Um, Joe did have the singer from Aerosmith, Steve Tyler, on the show. Now, Steve Tyler, back in the day, um, you just look up what happened with him and a girl who was very young. I won't get into the details here. You can go look it up yourself. But to my mind, absolutely horrific. Absolutely hor horrific, right? Well, was any of that brought up, you know, by Mr. Moral Enforcer and High Standards? Yeah, well, of course not, right? So... Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm still appreciative of the fact that uh, I went on Joe's show and uh, the first two were very helpful and we had uh, differences of opinion, more I think in terms of just the aesthetics of friendship than uh, anything else. And, uh, you know, I'm sure he's doing fine work and I wish him well, but uh, yeah, I would not, <laughs> that's not a hold my breath kind of scenario. And yeah, I think, you know, that's that's the reality. All right. So. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Honestly, I would have thought he would have been more butthurt about it, which is I'm actually somewhat impressed that he wasn't, you know, as butthurt as I thought he would be. I thought he'd be like pissed or angry. He seemed to moreover have like a, oh, you know, so be it. It's OK. I wish them best, which is, you know, it's pretty surprising. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's very surprising for me personally. But certainly, you know, it, it was interesting to say the least. But again, to reiterate, Dave Rubin had him on and talked about the race IQ thing, and st he regretted doing that. So that's the that's the Dave Rubin half of what he's talking about, what Stefan is talking about there, and it's because his ideas are not mainstream, uh, or not <laughs> they're so out of the mainstream they don't even fit the IDW's model. Now. Um, he talks about Joe Rogan. This is where it gets interesting. So Joe Rogan, I believe he was on, Stefan was on once or twice, I think. And, um, naturally, as you guys know, Stefan is a complete lunatic, by the way. Um, obviously he's continued to descend into the, you know, whole race IQ stuff more and more. And he's gone into just full on in that direction of a loony. But, um, he's really crazy in other ways too. So apparently... One time when he was on the Rogan podcast, I don't know if he was asked about this, but there's a clip of someone else coming on and calling out Stefan for lying about the death of Robin Williams. Remember Robin Williams? Um, you know, when he had committed suicide, it was really crazy. Everyone was like, God damn, what happened? Um, because he seemed like such a happy guy. And then it started to kind of make waves. Um, uh, you know, that, you know, just because you look happy, you're not necessarily not depressed. So... He was basically saying that the reason or one of the contributors was that he had these quote unquote vampiric uh, like multiple wives that he had to pay alimony to. Um, like I forget if it was child or if it was for just being spousal alimony. But he totally lied about that because he had a bunch of money. He was very rich. And that's what Joe Rogan said. Joe Rogan said, I shared an agent with him and this is total bogus. And Stefan's claim about Robin Williams was basically Stefan is if you and if you watch that clip, basically, he's like an incel, like 70 year old incel who just hates women. He clearly has like this deep hatred of women that exists due to probably like, you know, chronic rejection or whatever it may be. Um, but that's clearly what that is. He looks like an incel who essentially grew up to, you know, continue to be an incel his entire life. That's what it looks like to me. That's because that's what it is. So. That was super interesting. And then also one of the other aspects of Stefan that is crazy is he has this... He's basically a cultish guy, apparently. So he has this thing called defooing or something where you just... You isolate people for different reasons. So like just 
I think if your family members or something don't agree with you on something, <laughs> like, you're just supposed to just, like, completely abandon them and just totally go off on your own way. I guess it's, like, MGTOW in a different, you know, just not for gender purposes, for other reasons. Um, and I think that he had said that, like, if your friends support Nike, this was recently, he said if you support Nike, don't talk to them anymore or something like that. If you watch this guy's videos, uh, you know that he's extremely hyperbolic. And he makes different statements that sound like he's talking about something really crazy. <laughs> and he, he throws in, you know, just, you know, metaphorically, not literally. He has to throw that in there. Kind of like AJ has to do, <laughs> where he'll just say something crazy, be like, <laughs> not literally. Because what he's saying is so insane. But this is super interesting. Because what you're seeing there is, and again, this is the difference between AJ and Stefan, right? AJ goes insane. Stefan you know, kind of keeps on the DL and does, he, and he's still a lunatic, by the way, but for whatever reason, he's not as angry about this, I'm really, really surprised, I'm shocked, in fact, that he is not just blowing off steam like everyone else who is outside of the mainstream is, but Stefan and Lauren are buddies, remember that time that I, I did the video on that whole big Stefan, Brett Weinstein, David Pakman, Lauren Southern beat like argument type thing that happened. Um, it's because even the IDW won't host these guys. The IDW won't, you know, they won't associate with Lauren Southern or, or Stefan, and that pisses them off because that's supposed to be the non mainstream area. But, anyways, uh, of course, he's a certified loony, absolutely crazy. But uh, let me know your thoughts on this down below. It's very interesting.